Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. Motion tracking in Anime Studio allows us to import a video and then set points so that our layers will follow those points on the video. Those points will automatically detect movement in the video and follow whatever you set your point to. So in this case, I have imported a video of myself holding a, well, a cat feather stick. I'm not really sure what they're called. I hope my cat doesn't mind. Anyway, if we page through here, you can see that I'm moving the stick down and then back up. What I want to do is draw an object and track that object to the end of the stick so that when the stick moves, my object moves with it. So first, I can draw the object, and I'll come over here to my Layers panel and just put this vector layer above my Movie layer. And I will do something simple like taking the Draw Shape tool and selecting the oval. And now I'll come over here to my Effects and choose a gradient, make it radial, and change the colors here just to give it something of a different look. And now I can draw just like that. So I guess I'm wielding some sort of magic wand or something. For right now though, I will stick this to the side and I will work with it in a little bit. The first thing we need to do is select our video layer. Now, taking the video tracking tool, I can come over here to my video and click where I want to track. With something like this, it's very simple. So we don't need to set more than one point because I'm just really wanting to track this area of the wand or the stick. Another thing I can do is zoom in here. If I put my cursor here in the dark gray area, click and move around, you can see I can resize the area. So if I resize it to about that size, that should work for my purposes because it takes up the whole um, end of the stick. I can nudge things around. If you enlarge and decrease the size of the inside of this circle right here, you can adjust the sensitivity. Now, the greater your sensitivity, the more your um, video or your tool is going to grab and then track with. So it's probably best to be as small as possible with this because you don't want your tracking device to grab outside pixels. For instance, if you have a background that has a similar color to that of the object you want to track, you may run into some issues with this. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are working with this. So now that I have this set up, I can name the track. In this case, I'll name it End. And then come down here to my timeline. So first I'll advance forward one frame. And you can see I have created some keyframes now for this. And now I can hit play. And you can see it is now tracking the object. And as I do this, it creates keyframes. Okay, so now we have the object tracked. Next step is to select the layer that we want to track. Now go up to animation, track layer to video. Here we can set which video we want to track. In this case, there's only one in this project file and that is motion track four. We also have the ability to track a primary and secondary point in debut. In this case, we can choose end. There is only one point right now to track. And once I've done that, I can click OK. Now the thing is, depending on how you drew this, um, you can see now, as I go through and do this, that the origin point is tracking to the stick. My object is offset. You can see, as I play this out, that the object I drew is animating with it, but it's just offset. 
So you may need to, depending on how you drew your object, bring your object to the origin. So now when I play this, you can see that it goes with it. And I could probably make this a little bit bigger. So I can go like that. And there we go. Now let's say I want to add to this object. I come over here to my draw shape tool. I grab a rectangle and I create a different color here for it. Okay, and then I draw it in like so and rotate it like this. It's about right. Okay, anyway, so I have the object like this now. And if I play this out, you can see that the object doesn't rotate. We can try creating a second point to get this rotation to work. So if we come back here to the motion track, take the video tracking tool, and now click to create a new tracking point. You can zoom in here a bit and try to enlarge this to fill up a good portion of my hand. Come down like this. I can go like that. And I can name this now hand and go forward now one frame on my timeline and hit play. You can see this track out. And I may need to do some adjusting here. You can see it's kind of coming off the hand a bit. So I can come up to about here and then delete the keyframes that were made for it. And then starting here, I can just try to move it back on track like so. And then we can play from there to see how it works. It's looking better now. Okay, so now we have tracked that point. Now we can go back to the layer with the cartoon object on it and go up to animation, track layer to video. And this time choose a secondary tracking point of hand. And before clicking okay, you can see now we can adjust the angle or the scale appropriately. For right now, let's just pick angle and click okay. And so now when we play this, you can see now it angles more with the track. It's not perfect, so that means we might have to go in and do some adjusting manually, such as moving the track around or adjusting how that bottom portion of the track looks. However, it gives you the idea that you can, of course, do angle tracking, scale tracking, as well as just traditional tracking. And that wraps up this lesson on video tracking in Anime Studio. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so please check those out, and I'll see you next time.